Hi there, if you remember, in the previous video, the three categories of ladder logic instructions were explained. In this video, other remaining instructions will be explained and tested. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Alright, let's create a standard project like the previous videos. Well, let's start learning instructions, with the boolean operators. If you remember, during the video with this link, and, or, and also x or logic were explained using simple contacts. For example, let's see how the last one can be used. As you see, it has an input to enable it, then it will perform the x or logic between the next two inputs. On the other hand, a variable can be specified to store the result. Before testing the inserted X or logic, let me write its equivalent program using simple contacts. It was explained in lesson 2. Alright, these two programs do X or logic between the same inputs, A and B, and store the result on the two distinct variables. Now, let me test them. Ok, let's enable the X or logic. Remember, I press Ctrl plus F7 on my keyword, every time I want to change the state of each variable manually. Now, based on the program, when I change either the A or the B variable, these two variables will be changed similarly. Alright, other logics can be tested similarly. Now, let's go to the other operators category. Its first instruction is called binary selector. Let's test it. As you see, the instruction has four inputs. The first one is used to enable it, like many other instructions which were explained until now. The data type of the second input is binary. If it is zero or false, the next value will be sent to the destination variable on the other side. Its data type can be anything such as boolean, real or integer numbers. The important point is that the data type of these inputs and the destination variable must be the same. Finally, if the second input is equal to one, the last input will be sent to the other side. Now, let's test the program. Well, let's enable the instruction. Now, its second input is false. Therefore, the stored value on this variable has been selected. Let me change its value. 
Okay, I've forgotten to start the simulation. Now, let's change the state of the second input to true or 1. At this time, the specified value at the last input has been sent to the other side. Let's continue. The next instruction is called multiplexer. Similarly, it can be used to select a value or variable. Note that, the data type of the second input is integer. Like the previous instruction, if its value is equal to 0, the third input will be selected, and if its value is equal to 1, the fourth input will be sent to the other side. Furthermore, the number of the inputs can be extended. OK, the number of inputs has increased. Note that, the data type of the inputs and the output variable must be the same. Let's work with real numbers. Automatically, CodeZs will select this data type for the output variable. Now, if the second input is changed to 2 or 3, the last two inputs will be selected respectively. Now, let's test the inserted multiplexer. OK, let's enable the instruction. Now, the current value of the second input is 0. So, this number has been selected. If I change it to 1, the next input will be selected. Let me change its value. Similarly, the second input can be used to select other inputs. Note that, if the selected number is too large, the last input will be selected. Well, the third instruction in the other operators category is the limit instruction. It's very commonly used in ladder logic programming. It gives us a simple way to make sure that the specified value falls between two distinct limits. First, we must select two values as the desired min and max limits. Then specify the variable that whose value must be restricted. Now, if the value of this variable is a number between 10 and 100, it will be sent to the other side without any changing. If its value is lower or higher than 10 or 100 respectively, these two numbers will be sent to the other side. Now, let's test the limit instruction. Now, the current value of the input variable is 0 which is lower than 10. So the number 10 has been sent to other side. Let's increase the input number. Now, its value is 15 which is between 10 and 100. So, the instruction has sent it to other side without any changing. Finally, if the input number is greater than 100, the maximum limit will be used on the other side. Let's continue. The next instruction is move, which was explained in the previous video. The next one is conversion. It can change the data type of stored numbers. As you may know, there are several data types in PLCs. For now, I'm going to use this instruction to convert a number which belongs to real numbers, to an integer number. Naturally, its fractional part will be omitted. Note that, instead of writing the conversion type, I can click here and find my desired conversion. For example, Let's select this one which will convert its input number to an integer number. Like the previous one. Now, let's use suitable variables for the inputs and outputs. Note that, the selected data type for the conversion output is not boolean. It's integer. Therefore, Instead of using coils, the assignment item must be used.
Now, let's change the input number and see the converted number on the other side. Note that, the performances of these two networks are the same. Well, let's continue to learn other instructions, by clearing the current program. The only remaining category on the right side is general. As you know, the first item, can be used to add a network to the program. The next two instructions are called box, with a little difference. Both of them can be used to enter an instruction from the CodeZs library, but the second one has an extra input to enable it. Here, I can write any instruction name, or click here to open this window, and then find my desired instructions, for example counter instructions, or a math operator like addition which were explained before. As you see, more instructions are accessible inside the window, comparing to the right side. For instance, this one returns the exponential value of its input, based on the Euler number. This one is an abbreviation of shift right. It shifts the bit pattern on a word or byte memory to its right side. Although, there are lots of instructions and it's not possible to explain all of them during the CodeZs course, but you can test and learn them, as well as the instructions which were tested until now. For example, let's test this one. It calculates the absolute value of its input. Note that, you can use the help window, to search any instruction name to learn what it does. Alright, as you can see, the instruction has calculated the absolute value of its input, minus 25, which is equal to 25. Well, other instructions in the general category were explained during the previous videos, except this one, which can executes a simple program in structured text language. Now, let me write a simple program in structured text. I'll do a more practical project with this language later. Well, assume if the stored value on this variable is less than 10, this boolean output must be on, otherwise my program must turn it off. Now, let's compile the program to ensure there isn't any error and then download and test the program. OK, let's enable the inserted instructions. As you can see, this condition is met. So, this output is on. Let me change the stored value on this memory. Now, this part of my program has turned off this output. Again, let's decrease this value to under the number 10, to turn on this output. Alright, all instructions on the right list have been explained. You can use the help window to learn other instructions. In the next video, I'll explain how other program organization units, functions, and function blocks, can be used to write more efficient programs. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.